in this lesson, we're going to be taking a look at graphing polynomials, specifically quadratic and cubic polynomials. And we'll save some of the other graphing of polynomials for like quartics and quintics and all those for a little bit later. But for now, we're going to have to be able to graph the quadratics and the cubics without being given the parent function graph at the start. So that's your goal by the end of this is to be able to just look at that equation and know what the graph will look like. Now, first of all, if you don't already have it down, we do need to know that the basic graph of x squared is a parabola, that U-shaped graph, which either opens up or it could also open down, depending on uh, the type of equation, of course, and what sort of transformations are being applied. Now, that's our basic parent function. Uh, previously, we've graphed these by using function notation, which would have looked like that. 2 minus f of x plus 5. And here when we first see it, that might help you to be able to recognize what's doing what here. So the 2 that's out front there, uh, notice it is out front. It is a positive 2. That is exactly the same as when I, instead of having the 2 out front there, if I had actually had it written as like a plus 2 like that. That does mean the same thing. And oftentimes that's the big bridge that makes it easier to graph there. And so the negative is being applied to f there, which means that it's flipping the graph upside down. So I have a reflection across the x-axis, and then I have that plus 5 in there. Since it's inside with the x, we know it's shifting it in the x direction, and plus shifts left. And so our graph is going to be shifted left 5, and then the plus 2 hanging on the end, that's going to be shifting the entire graph up 2. Because remember, anytime we're adding on to the very end, it's shifting it up or down. So no, knowing that then, I have my general parabola shape, the x squared graph. But I'm going to have to be reflecting across the x-axis, which means it's now going to be opening downward instead. And it's going to be shifted left 5 and up 2, which means I'm going to be having to put my vertex then left 5 and up 2. Now, I don't want to just kind of do that very roughly of drawing in where that graph is going to be. I need to be much more precise than that. So normally what I would do with the next squared graph is that if I went over 1, I would go up 1 because 1 squared is 1. In this case, then, I'm going to go over 1 and down 1 because, remember, we're opening downward. Uh, what if I go over 2? If I go over 2, 2 squared is 4. So instead of over 2, up 4, I'm going to go over 2, down 4. And what about going over 3? 3 squared is 9. So that means I'm going to have to go over 3 and down 9. And it doesn't look like I'm going to be able to fit any more on that side. So then I would also fill in the points on the left-hand side, which actually follow the same pattern of over 1, down 1, over 2, down 4, and over 3, down 9. Once I have those plotted, then I can go ahead and draw the curve through them. Now, if you're submitting this sort of a problem on the computer, you won't have to plot all of those points in order to be able to actually have the graph show up. In that sort of a case, you'd plot your vertex, and then you just need to plot any one of the other points in order to plot it in there. So you could go over one, down one, or you could go over two and down four in order to plot the rest of the curve up to you. But just realize, that uh, on graphing it on the computer, in some ways it makes your life a little bit easier because you don't have to worry about every single little point. And now we move on to our next problem. And you notice that this one looks a lot like the last one. The only difference is that instead of it being squared, this one is cubed. And the only difference that's going to make is basically in our parent function that we're basing it all on because x cubed is going to be this kind of S-shaped graph is the way a lot of people like to describe it. But that graph gets formed by cubing whatever number we go over. So let's go ahead and again make our graph here. It, this one's the same equation except for it being cubed instead of squared. So all of our transformations are the same. So I'm still going to have to start by going left 5 and up 2. And that's where my first point's going to go. And again, I need to be precise about where the rest of the points go from there. Now, normally, if I were just graphing a positive x cubed from there, I'd go over 1 and up 1 in order to be able to get to my next point, because 1 cubed is 1. However, in this particular case, 
uh, because it's negative, I'm going to have to actually go right one and down one because that's the flipping upside down part. Okay, then from there, I'd normally go over two and up eight because two cubed, that is two times two times two, is eight. Well, again, I'm flipping it upside down, so I'm instead going to go over two and down eight here. And if I go over 3, 3 cubed is 27. I definitely don't have room to go down 27, so that's as many as I can plot on the right side. On the left side, I would normally go left 1, down 1, because negative 1 cubed is negative 1. But that also has to flip upside down because of our negative here. So instead of going left 1, down 1, I'm going to go left 1, up 1. And then instead of left two down eight, I'm gonna go left two and up eight, again, because the whole thing's been flipped upside down. And there I have my points. Now it's just a matter of drawing the curve through those points, and I'm done. And just like uh, before, if we were doing this on the computer, we'd have to start by plotting that first point, and then you only need to plot one of those other points to be able to draw in the rest of the curve. So for instance, you might be able to plot that point. Because on the computer, you choose which shape you want first, then plot your starting point, and then just one more will tell it where to go from there. In our next problem, this one looks again very similar to the last one, but it actually is actually quite a bit different. Because we still have the two here out front of the parentheses, but remember before, there was a minus sitting here between the two of them. That actually really changes a lot about what that 2 is doing, because before, the 2 is just being added to it. Now the 2 is being multiplied. So the 2 here is actually a vertical stretch by a factor of 2, because it's multiplying it by 2. And the plus 5 is doing exactly what it did in the last problem, shifting the entire graph left 5. So in this case, my first point is going to be shifted left 5, so I can go ahead and plot that one right now. But normally, from there, if I didn't have the vertical stretch, I would put my next point over 1 and up 1, because 1 cubed is 1. Instead, though, I have to vertically stretch it by a factor of 2. So I'm still going to go over 1, but I'm going to go up twice as far. So instead of up 1, I'm going to go up 2. All right, from there, my next point would normally be over 2 and up 8 because two cubed is eight. In this case, because I'm vertically stretching it by a factor of two, I'm not gonna go up eight, I'm gonna go up 16, which you'll notice puts me off my graphing grid, and therefore I'm not gonna be able to plot that point. All right, well, that's all I can do going to the right, so let's head over to the left. Normally, as I head to the left, I'd be going over one down one, because negative one cubed is negative one, and so I again need to double that height. And so negative 1 times 2 is negative 2. So I'm still going left 1, but I'm going to go down 2 instead. And then normally I would go left 2 and down 8, because negative 2 cubed is negative 8. But again, i got to multiply that one by 2, the y coordinate part of it. And so it would still be left 2, but now it would be down 16, which again is off my graphing grid. And as a result, these are the only actual points we can plot there. And so then I can go ahead and draw my curve in. Now, knowing that my next point, if I went over 2 and then went up, I know that it'd be up here at 16. Uh, so I know that as I go through those points, I should not be doing this sort of a thing, right? Because I know that I haven't crossed that line. So just be careful when you do draw in that curve to make sure it's still following in the general direction of where that next point would be. If we now tweak that equation just a little bit for our next problem and make it the same equation except change the cubed into a squared this time, uh, we now are going to be trying to figure out then what this graph will look like. The transformations are the same. We're still going to be stretching it vertically by a factor of 2 and shifting it left 5. The difference is that because it's x squared, we know it's going to be a parabola. So I'm going to go ahead and put my first point left 5, same as I would. And then 
I got to multiply my verticals by two. So instead of going over one, up one, because one squared is one, I'm going to go over one and up twice as far. So over one, up two. And as you may recall, for the parabola, it does that on both sides. So I'm just going to go ahead and plot both those points at the same time. My next point would normally be over 2, up 4. Well, if it's normally up 4, and I'm doubling the height of this, it'll instead be over 2 and up 8. And so I'm going to go and put my next point over 2 and up 8. And again, I can go ahead and do that on both sides. After that, yeah, we're going to be off the graphing grid, so this is now enough to go ahead and draw my curve through those points. And then we've completed that graph. And now finally, we are again going to start introducing the idea of the vertical compression into this. So far, we've only dealt with vertical compressions when we are graphing absolute value. But now we're going to be doing it in terms of these uh, polynomials as well. So let's go ahead and actually write out what each of our transformations are. So first up, the 1 half, that's going to be a vertical compression by a factor of 1 half, meaning that we're going to go up half as far as we normally would. Then the minus 3 and the minus 8. So knowing that, then that basically tells me that because it's squared up here, that it's going to be our standard quadratic graph, so my parent function is a parabola. And my parabola is being compressed vertically by a factor of 1 half, shifted to the right, and shifted down. So the very first thing I'm going to do is go ahead and plot my vertex point, which is right 3 and down 8. And then I again think about what would I normally do. Normally, I'd go over 1, up 1. But in this case, I need to go up half as far. So I'm going to go over 1 and up just a half, because that's half of 1. Okay, after that. I would normally go over 2 and up 4. But again, the vertical compression by a factor of 1 half means I need to go up half as far. So instead of going up 4, I'm only going to go up 2. After that, my next point would normally be over 3 and up 9. I now need to multiply the 9 by a half. Half of 9 is 4.5, so I count up 4.5 from my vertex. And I do that again on both sides. Now often in the past that's as far as we could go because no other points fit. However, as you can see here, some other points are in fact going to fit on our graphing grid. So we need to keep going until we run out of ones that will fit. So next up, I just went over 3. So next I'm going to be going over 4. 4 squared is 16. So normally I'd have to go over 4 and up 16. In this case, then, it's going to be over 4 and up half of that, which is 8. So over 4 and up 8 in this graph. Next up, I'd go over 5. And 5 squared is 25. So normally, it would be over 5, up 25. 25 times 1 half, though, is 12.5. So I'm actually going to go over 5 and up 12.5. And we keep going from there. So next up, I'm going to go over 6. 6 squared is 36. Okay, so half of 36 would be 18. So this would be over 6 and up 18, which it looks like I barely can fit. That takes me actually to the very top of the graph in this particular case. And so having plotted that, I'm definitely not going to be able to fit anything above that. So I now have all my points plotted. And I can go ahead and draw my curve in. And again, a note on when you're entering answers like this onto the computer. Of course, you would start by plotting your vertex first, but then you need to plot another point. And you might be saying, yeah, but I can't plot the point at a half. And sometimes that's the case. Sometimes it won't let you put a point at anything except a whole number. If that's the case, then just look for a different point that is at a whole number. You actually have a lot of different options here that were in fact plotted right at one of the whole number combinations. So you could make your second point be any of those. So anytime you hit one where you say, yeah, but this is a fraction or it's a decimal, we'll just pick a different point then. And our last problem here that we're going to be taking a look at is the exact same transformations again as the last one, except like I've been doing, I now switched it from being a quadratic to a cubic. 
So we have the same transformations, meaning that I'm still going to start at the same place. I'm still going to start right three and down eight. And just like before, I'm only going to go up half as far as I normally would. So normally I would go right one and up one. In this case, then I'm going to have to go right one and up only a half. Uh, I can go ahead and fill in the left side as well here, but remember that uh, the shape of this graph, it's not the U shape. It goes down on the left. So when I go left one, I'm going to go down, specifically in this case, down a half. All right, on the right side now, uh, what if I go over 2? I would have to go up 2 cubed, which is 8. What's half of 8? 4. And so in this case, then, I would go over 2 and up 4. Because we're always saying whatever I'd normally go up, I'm going to go up half of that. Uh, if I want to go to the left here, that would mean I'd be going left 2 and down 4 as well. But you notice that one takes me off the graphing grid, so I'm actually done on the left side of the graph. But I may not be done on the right side, so let's keep going there. Uh, if I go over 3, I would have to go up 3 cubed. 3 cubed is 27. So I'm going to do 27 times 1 half, which is 13.5. That does fit on my graphing grid. And so I go ahead and I plot that one. Then the next point, let's double check that it won't fit. It looks like it probably won't fit, but let's go ahead and double check it. If I went over 4, I'd normally have to go up 4 cubed, which is 64. 64 times a half is 32. Yep, I don't have room to go up 32. So that confirms that those are all the points that I can actually fit on my grid here. Now I can go ahead and draw the curve through those. And then that gives me my graph. And again, one last note about when we go to enter this in the computer. Yes, we would always be starting by plotting our very first point. But again, that next point is at a decimal or a fraction, right? So just like before, you'd want to grab a point that's at a whole number. And in this case, it's only that one as an option. We would only be able to plot that point as our second point.